We previously derived an infectious disease model without immunity. In this model, called the SIS model, the state variable s of t was the fraction of susceptible people at time t, and the state variable i of t was the fraction of infected people at time t. In this model, susceptible people could become infected upon contact with an infected person, and when an infected person recovered, they would become susceptible again, able to get the disease once more if they contacted another infected person. Since in this model individuals were either susceptible or infected, the fractions of susceptible and infected people had to add up to 1, and so we could rewrite s as 1 minus i, and not separately keep track of the number of susceptible individuals. We could then write down our model using a single differential equation, di dt equals alpha times i times 1 minus i minus mu times i, where the first term represented how the number of infected individuals would increase when a susceptible individual would become infected, and the second term would represent how the number of infected individuals would decrease when an infected individual would recover and become susceptible again. In some diseases, however, after individuals recover from infection, they become immune to the disease. Susceptible individuals become infected as before, but when they recover, they don't go back to the susceptible pool. Instead, they go to another pool. Let's call this the R pool for recovered or removed. Removed individuals can't go back to becoming infected. This is a disease like chickenpox, where once you recover, you're immune, or a disease like Ebola, where infected people usually die. Either way, once individuals are done being infected, they are removed from the model because they don't influence either the number of susceptibles or the number of infecteds. This model is called the SIR model, which is a modification of the SIS model incorporating immunity. Does adding immunity to the model make the analysis of the model harder or easier? Well, now we have another state variable, r of t. We need to know the fraction of people who are removed at time t, where removed could be recovered or dead depending on the disease we're modeling. In the SIS model, we could write everything in terms of i of t, the fraction of infected people. But in the SIR model, knowing the fraction i of infected people doesn't alone allow us to determine the fraction s of susceptible people. We can no longer write s equals 1 minus i. Instead, we need to separately keep track of both s and i. If some people have recovered, s could be less than 1 minus i. On the other hand, we don't have to separately specify the fraction of removed, r. Since each individual is either susceptible, infected, or removed, s plus i plus r must add up to 1, and so we can let r equal 1 minus s minus i. Since we have to keep track of both s and i, we're going to need two different differential equations, one for the change in s and one for the change in i. To write down our equation, let's label our diagram with the transition rates. Just like with the SIS model, the transition rate from susceptible to infected will be proportional to both the number of susceptibles s and the number of infectives i, where the proportionality constant is the infection rate parameter alpha. The only difference is that we cannot write the fraction of susceptibles as 1 minus i. The transition rate due to recovery from infection is also the same. It'll be proportional to i, and the proportionality constant is mu, the recovery rate parameter. The arrows coming into i and leaving i are the same as before, so the equation for i is exactly the same as we had before, only with using s rather than 1 minus i. So di dt equals alpha times i times s minus mu times i. For the equation for s, we just need to include the fact that s will decrease, or the change will be negative, when susceptible individuals become infected, which is at the rate alpha times i times s. These two differential equations form a system of equations to determine the evolution of the two state variables s of t and i of t. 
or sometimes we'll just call it a two-dimensional system of differential equations. Two-dimensional systems are indeed trickier than one-dimensional systems or single autonomous differential equations like our SIS model. So our answer to the question, did immunity make it harder or easier, it's definitely that it made it harder. But it also made it more interesting. Single autonomous differential equations can't do a whole lot. They can converge to an equilibrium or blow up, but they can't even change direction. If the state variable is increasing, it can only keep on increasing or slow down and stop. As we learn new methods to analyze two-dimensional systems of differential equations, we'll see that these models can behave in a lot more interesting ways.